Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and I got my Star Wars mask finished. This is Wallavan. He's pink and wrinkled. <laughs> and yes, I know. Um, he should have a black leather helmet and this crazy looking black vest. I'm not going to get quite that carried away. I don't even have a black sweatshirt, and this is my closest thing to black. It spent a whole lot of time in the studio, obviously. But this is just going to have to do. This is Halloween. We can get away with just about anything. Uh, one of my blog people happened to mention that I usually do animals, as you obviously can tell. Um, but he was a lot of fun, and it is Halloween, and it's coming up. If you missed the last video, I actually showed you how I put the whole thing together, uh, starting out with the uh, clay model over a mannequin. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I finished it up. I did the paper mache, I put on the wrinkles, and then I painted it. And so let's get right to that. I'll show you how I finished him. I used some blue shop towels for my paper mache, and I also used a paste made out of drywall joint compound and white glue, Elmer's glue. The drywall joint comb has to be any brand except DAP. And the only place in my town where I can get drywall joint compound that isn't made by the DAP company is at Walmart. So I, I took a trip down to Walmart and I bought my shop towels and my drywall joint compound. You can find the recipe for this paste that I'm using out on my website. And there's also a lot of videos already out there that show you how the shop towels are put on over the clay model. Um, in fact, there are so many, I don't really want to do that part again in detail here, but you can find a really good three-part video series of a Commedia Del Art mask on the extended tutorial page. So I'm going to link to both of those pages down in the description below the video, and you can go check those out. Now, when I had at least two layers of the blue shop towels and the paste over the entire form, I put it in front of the fan and left it there for two days, maybe a little bit more, because I wanted to make absolutely sure that it was dry all the way through. If you take it off of the clay form too fast, you could end up destroying your mask. It just simply won't hold its shape until it's dry. Once it was dry, it would have been an awful lot easier to get this clay and paper mache off of the mannequin if I had followed the instructions in my own book on how to make masks, but I forgot. Uh, what I tell everybody to do is before you even start with the clay, put a plastic bag over the mannequin or your plastic mask form. And then when the, pla uh, when the paper mache is dry, you can just pull up on that plastic and the clay will just pop right off of your plastic form. And then you can really easily take the clay out from the inside of your dried paper mache. I think I need to go back and read my own book a little more often because I just, I just plain forgot. It would have made it so much easier. It did work though, um, because I used a really soft clay. The Sargent's Plastilina is so soft, it still came off without too much of a struggle. I did use kitchen paper towels for the final skin and the wrinkles because I liked little bumps on them. If you would like to have no texture on your skin and just have it nice and smooth, go ahead and use the blue shop towels for the wrinkles too. Uh, the, this particular paper towel that I'm using only has one ply, but that's really unusual. I haven't seen one ply paper towels for a long time. Uh, they just happen to have some down at my local store. If you get your paper towels, they're probably going to have two plies. You'll need to pull those apart because if you don't, they're going to delaminate and you'll end up... Uh, you end up being unhappy as when you be, so take them apart first, and then make your wrinkles. Wrinkles were really fun. <laughs> it took a long time. Obviously, it had to dry again, and I sprayed it with some primer. I uh, didn't have to do that, actually, but I had some, so I used it. And I really like the dark terracotta color underneath the pink. Um, it doesn't show through in very many places, but uh, I think it kind of helps set the tone. Then I added, well, probably three coats of the skin pink. I use raw sienna, magenta, and white for the skin tones. And for each coat, I used a, a slightly different uh, combination of those three colors. You can't really see all the different coats because they're not transparent, but uh, for some reason I like the, the layered feel. The more layers you get on there, the, uh, the richer it tends to look. Then I let that dry. I gave it a coat of matte acrylic varnish, and when the varnish was dry, 
I did one last coat of varnish and I added just a few drops of white to it, to the varnish. Um, that transparent white really helped kind of make the skin come alive. Real skin is transparent and paint is not, so uh, the varnish and the paint together I think just gives it a, a slightly more lifelike look. When you have to paint something that's all one color, it's really uh, a challenge to make it look interesting. Otherwise, you could just use a, a can of spray paint, you know, which would work in the case of something like this, but it might not be quite the look that you're hoping for. Uh, using anything that's transparent or layered really makes a difference. Now that this guy's all done, I'm going to start uh, finishing up this fellow. I started him uh, maybe a month ago. I did a lot of experiments on him and I thought I was going to throw him out. Um, yesterday I pulled him out of the <laughs> trash can. He was just too cool to throw out. So I'm going to finish him up uh, and in my next video I'll show you how it turns out. <laughs> so um, there, there will be some more actual animals coming soon, I'm sure. <laughs> just not this time. It's Halloween. we got to do something fun. So I'll see you then. Come and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com.